All right, kids, welcome to Unit 3. This is Chapter 4 in your book. It's about triangles. And yes, there's going to be a lot of proofs in this chapter, so get ready. All right, the beginning of this stuff looks really easy. It's about, hey, guess what a triangle is. Okay, so yes, we technically define a triangle as just this sort of framework part here. It's just the three segments, which includes the endpoints that are the corners of the triangle. The corners are called the vertex. Each one is called the vertex, plural is called the vertices. See that right here? Uh, these things that are the sides um, are the, the, the segments we call sides. Um, the labeling, the notation for what we call a triangle, it's pretty easy to figure out. I think you've probably seen this before. Triangle ABC, you use the little triangle symbol and then write the three letters, nothing on top. Uh, and again, yeah, the vertices are those points. We write points as that, as you know. Uh, the sides are segments, we write them that way, and the angles, uh, triangle has three angles, that's kind of what triangle means. Um, and of course you could write those with three separate letters, um, you know what I mean, like uh, a single letter for each of the three angles, or you could write them with a three letter notation. And of course this could work backwards also, CBA is the same. So those are the three angles of the triangle. Alright, we can classify triangles by lengths, by the types of sides it has, or we can also do it by the types of angles, which you can see on your sheet. Um, the first one that they talk about here is by sides, and by sides, these are the three different names we get. Scalene, isosceles, and equilateral. Uh, the important thing to note here, the part that you're gonna, that's gonna mess you up, the part that's going to confuse you or get you on some tricky little question, is this part about isosceles being at least two. So you might want to write this down right next to that because this is the thing that's going to get you. So if isosceles could have at least two sides congruent, or the definition of isosceles is at least two sides congruent, that means three is also isosceles. In other words, equilateral an equilateral triangle is also isosceles. Doesn't work the other way around. But if you know you have an isosceles triangle, you might be on the lookout because what you might actually have is an equilateral if you find out some more information. Or just because you have an equilateral doesn't mean you don't have an isosceles triangle. That was a lot of negatives, sorry. Uh, if you have an equilateral triangle, you know you also have an isosceles triangle because this has at least two sides congruent. Okay. Uh, the other way to classify triangles is by their angles. So uh, you name a triangle basically by the largest angle it has. Um, here, the largest angle is an acute angle. They're all three acute angles, so all we, can, we call the triangle acute. There's an obtuse angle here. So yes, these are two uh, acute angles, but we're going we're gonna to label it by the largest angle. So you know what? I'm going to put the little thing right here and say largest. I'm going to write this on your sheet. It's the largest angle of a triangle that gives the triangle its name. Uh, in a right triangle, of course, the largest angle is the, is the right angle. Uh, there's one that's kind of unlike these, the others here, this one of equiangular. Um, it's a special name for when a triangle has three angles congruent. You could also say an equiangular triangle happens to be acute. If you look at these three angles that are all the same, we're going to find out what that measure is pretty soon. But they're all acute, so we can call that an acute triangle. So back to this last, this last idea, all triangles have a, a name kind of in both these categories. They have a name about their sides and they have a name about their angles. So they might say something like draw an acute scalene triangle or draw an obtuse isosceles triangle. And so you have to combine the two ideas sometimes in one triangle. All right, here's the big news. Here's the thing you uh, hopefully already knew about, but um, this is going to be the thing that leads to the most interesting problems and this idea goes on for the rest of the year. We use this a lot. The three angles of a triangle add up to 180. Huge idea. You may have known that before. You may have actually uh, gotten somewhere by applying this on the last test, even though you weren't meant to do that. Uh, it's not, it wasn't illegal, it's just you hadn't learned about it until now. Uh, but yeah, that's true. Um, let's look at why that's true. So there's this triangle ABC. And why would angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 have to add up to um, 180? Well, the way they show this is pretty slick, actually. Let's start here and say, well, let's, let's take uh, point B. You can pick any point. This will work 
any, any corner. Uh, we're trying to figure out why is 1 plus 2 plus 3 going to have to equal 180 no matter what. Okay, so any random triangle, pick, point, pick a point and draw a line through that point that is parallel to the opposite side. So they did this so it would be parallel. Uh, this is your explanation down here. You're trying to say why does this prove that we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 180. I'll, I'll talk you through it here and then you have to write it down here. Uh, all right, so I can just draw this parallel. So that's the given that those are parallel. Can you tell why the measure of angle 1 has to be the same as the measure of angle 4? It's the same reason, here's a hint, it's the same reason why 3 has to be the same as five, and both those reasons were in last chapter. All right, so one is equal to four, three is equal to five, and two is the other angle of the triangle. Look what's in the triangle now. I have uh, angle one and angle two and angle three. That's a green, a yellow, and an orange. And then look here, I have another set of green and yellow and orange, and they line up together and they make that much in terms of angle size. They line up together and make this. Think about the size of all three of those added up. Remember, four was the same as one, so those are really the same. Five is the same as three, and here they are in a clump of three lined up on a, on a line like this. We know what that equals. So green plus yellow plus orange should equal green plus yellow plus orange. So guess what? We get 180 down there because of this. Pretty slick reasoning. I like that. Okay. Um, they, they name another piece of logic here, a thing called a corollary. So far we've talked about postulates and theorems. This goes in that same list. A corollary is another thing like a postulate or a theorem. Um, they use corollaries because a corollary um, is kind of related to some theorem. It's usually got a, a theorem that it kind of falls right after. There's, there'll be a theorem somewhere, like the, in this case it was the one with the 180 in the triangle. And if there's other things that fall directly from that, like some obvious kind of offshoots from that one thing. So these are these are like new theorems, but they're in some way related to the theorem we just learned. So they call them corollaries of another theorem. Uh, there's really no reason to remember that other than it's another name like theorem. Uh, it's, and it helps organize the, cor the, the different types of ideas. Anyway, these, they say, are falling right off the tree that <laughs> told us that what, there's 180 in a triangle. So if there's 180 in a triangle, and all of a sudden you've got a right triangle, well, it's not hard to figure out that that angle plus that angle are going to have to be 90. So in a right triangle, the other two, you know, the acute angles in a right triangle are complementary. Of course, that follows from the idea that uh, the whole triangle is 180. And the other one is, uh, if you have an obtuse angle in the triangle, so if L is right or obtuse, um, there can't be another right or obtuse angle because that would push us over 180 just with the two angles, and that's impossible. So this one's okay too. You might pull these out for a proof. Um, I don't think so so much. They're better for kind of checking your answers on those calculation type problems, but they're not um, incredibly proofy. I'll say it that way. Okay, next idea. Uh, there's this thing they call an exterior angle. Uh, like in this triangle ABC down here, if you extend one side, and you can extend any side anyway, and the thing you'll get when you extend a side out there is called an exterior angle. Let me draw another triangle up here and see if you can show you what I mean. Because any triangle could have a lot of exterior angles. So there's an exterior angle right there. I could have drawn an exterior angle over here. There's an exterior angle right there. These are different. I could have drawn an exterior angle right here. I could have extended this side and talked about an exterior angle right here. So I guess actually every triangle has six exterior angles. They're all over the place. In this picture, though, we're only going to talk about, or in this uh, idea, we're only going to talk about one at a time. Pick an exterior angle. So in this case, it's the 140. This 140, because of the 180 business, this 140 has to equal that plus that. Now think about why that is. Uh, these three angles have to add up to 180. So in this triangle, I have 40, and I have everything else. But notice this also has to make 180. So at this little vertex right here, I have, one, I have 40 here, and everything else over here. So think about that. This is 40. This represents everything else to make 180. And in this case also, here's 40, here's everything else that makes 180. So these two angles have to add up to 180 minus 40. This big angle has to add up to 180 minus 40. So this thing has to equal these two put together because they're both just 40 shy of a 180. I don't know what these two are. These two could be anything. I just know they have to add up to 140. So again here, I don't know what A and B are. I just know that if I add A plus B, I'll put two arcs here because I don't know if they're equal. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're not. But I know A plus B has to be angle one. B 
because if I could add, and think about here's why, if I could add the measure of angle ACB to both of these, add on both sides equal, ACB, they both become 180. And of course, ACB is the same on both, so that's why these two things have to be the same. Pause and go back on that if you need to. Uh, all right, so here we go, some actual calculations, and I think that's pretty much it. I want to make sure I get through this in the time allotted. All right, so find x on here. Um, do we know that this is an isosceles triangle? Sorry, it doesn't say that on your sheet. This isn't going to work unless we think this is an isosceles triangle. In general, there's no way to figure this out. If all you knew is this is the triangle and you have these three measurements, there's no way to proceed. You have to know something else. Okay, so this is an isosceles triangle, and I just told you that part, so go ahead and add that to your diagram. Uh, all we know here then is that, change color, uh, if those are equal, well then I can say the things that are represented, uh, representing their lengths are going to have to be equal. Is that 0 0.5? Okay, I'm going to pause for algebra, saving time. And I get x equals 1.5, so I can figure out what the two sides equal. So put 1.5 in for x, I can find out that each side, each one of these sides has a length of 7, but that tells me nothing about this. Just because these are 7, it's not like I can do Pythagorean theorem or anything. The only way to find this out is to put in what I know for x. Uh, and I get, oh, what is that, 9, 13 and a half, 12 and a half? Okay, lovely. All right, so let's do this. If a triangle is isosceles, then it is always, sometimes, never equilateral. Well, it could be an equilateral. We already talked about that, so that's okay. But does it have to be equilateral? No. It could just be isosceles. If it's equilateral, it has to be isosceles. If it's scalene, uh, it wouldn't have any sides equal, and isosceles requires that it has to have at least two, so that's impossible. If it's obtuse, could it be isosceles? In fact, it can. People forget about this sometimes, but you could have an obtuse angle up there like that, and it could be, the, like on the last diagram, it could look like that. It doesn't have to be. It could be obtuse and scalene, so we don't know if it has to be isosceles, but it could be. Okay. All right, let me draw this. Pause to draw. Okay, they give me these three coordinates, so I know how to plot those three points on there. Of course, the triangle we're talking about is this. I need to know if this triangle is isosceles. Uh, when it says classify, it should say how they want us to classify. And I think the only way we can classify this right now is by sides. So if I need to know about these sides and about if there's any of the same length, I need to find the distances of all those. So I need to find the distance from x to y. I need to find the distance from y to z. I need to find the distance from x to z. And so I'll use the distance plan. I'll talk about x, y first. The distance from x to y in the x sense, we did this last unit, that has a distance of 2, and the y span has a distance of 5, so I use Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus 5 squared. Sorry, I had to move that out of the way there so that we could uh, have room to write the actual answer over here. The answer then is going to be the square root of 29. And let me do that for the other two. And that's all distance stuff from last chapter. You should be able to do that. If not, ask me in class. Uh, and it turns out that, yeah, two of these are the same. So since xz has a length of square root of 29 and xy has a square root of, uh, length of square root of 29, that tells me these two are the same. And yes, the triangle is isosceles. And in fact, I know it's not equilateral because this is different. OK. All right, uh, find the value of x, right? This is ex exterior angles. We said uh, before that this angle x, the angle is represented by x degrees, that has to equal the sum of these other two angles, so it's going to equal 35 plus this guy. Well, I know what that guy is. He's 40 because I have 180 right here. So I'll write that again. x equals 35 plus 40, which is not hard to figure out. Great. Uh, find the values of x and y here. Uh, I'm looking at 180 in every triangle. Let me fill that out. I'm really about to run out of time, so let me do this quickly. I know those are both 70 because of the 180 in this upper triangle. If that's 70, this has to be 110. And 110 is an exterior angle to this triangle, so I know that 45 plus y equals 110. That's going to mean that y is 65. Last one. All right. All right, this one's pretty tricky, and I only have 40 seconds. I have 180 in this triangle up here, so because of the 180 in this triangle, I know that these three angles have to add to 180. So that, that has to do with why I wrote this first sentence. The other one, y minus x, is this angle down here. I know because these sides are parallel, this is AIA, alternate interior angles. I know it's equal to 25. The problem is now I have these two equations that are hard to solve together. We'll do that in the, with the calculator in class. See you there.
Well, we can type it in our calculator and it's going to look just like that. Awesome.